The following is a timely and insightful analysis by the Twitter X account Horn Perspectives. The opinions expressed in our op-ed section are solely those of the writer and may not, in part or in whole, necessarily reflect the editorial position of our channel. TPLF continues its irresponsible and reckless anti peace antics. The northern Ethiopian province of Tigray has the most disingenuous and inconsistent political elites. Let us talk about the so called border dispute between Eritrea and Ethiopia. When the conflict began in 1998, Eritrea stated that war was unnecessary as border disputes would eventually be resolved according to international law by a competent body. It even offered to withdraw from any contested area until a decision was made by an international court. Perceiving the Eritrean gesture as a sign of weakness, the Tigray People's Liberation Front TPLF, then in power in Ethiopia, waged a senseless war against Eritrea and engaged in vengeful acts against Eritreans in Ethiopia. After two years of negotiations from May 1998 to June 2000, marked by three rounds of wars that cost blood, tears and treasure, the TPLF agreed that the boundary should be decided by international arbitration. In December 2000, Algiers Agreement, the two countries agreed on three major points. 1. The establishment of a boundary commission that would have the sole authority not only to delimit the border, but also to demarcate it. 2. The decision of the Commission would be based on colonial treaties of 1900, 1902 and 1908 and would not make decisions quote, ex equo et bono, end quote. That is, from equity and conscience meaning decisions would be based solely on colonial treaties, not on current who administered it or who are its inhabitants. And three, the delimitation and demarcation determinations of the commission would be final and binding, and both countries would respect the determined border. One might wonder, why it took two years of bloodshed for the TPLF regime to agree to what Eritrea essentially proposed on May 14, 1998. But let us continue. In April 2002, the Eritrea-Ethiopia Boundary Commission, EEBC, issued its delimitation decision. The Eritrean leadership wisely did not celebrate the awarding of Badme, hoping to offer the TPLF leadership a face-saving opportunity to claim whatever was awarded to them as Badme. After initially declaring a significant victory at the court, in September 2003, Ethiopia's Prime Minister Meles Zenawi wrote a letter to the Secretary General of the UN, Kofi Annan, formally rejecting the EEBC decision, calling it, quote, illegal, unjust and irresponsible, end quote. Then there was a lot of acrobatics that I don't want to waste anyone's time detailing. However, Three things that happened during this period are important to mention. First, 
the UN cartography team developed a 1 to 25 scale map of the boundary between the two countries, which was more precise than the previously used 1 to 100 scale to facilitate the placement of boundary pillars. Second, the EEBC, after a request from Ethiopia and not Eritrea, clearly informed the two parties that the flashpoint town of Badme belonged to Eritrea and asked the TPLF to immediately seize its illegal population transfers to the area. Third, the EEBC continued to urge Ethiopia to begin demarcation which was consistently ignored by Ethiopia. Initially, Meles' excuse was that implementing the decision would provoke backlash from his army, potentially destabilizing the country, an apparent scare tactic aimed at the West. Then he introduced the weird term, accepting the ruling of the EEBC quote-unquote, in principle, but demanding dialogue to essentially change the verdict. This raises a question. Hadn't the two countries already negotiated and signed an agreement in Algiers, wherein they agreed that the decision of the Commission would be final and binding? Faced with the intransigence of the TPLF regime of Ethiopia, the EEBC demarcated the border through coordinates and declared that it had fulfilled its mandate, asking the two parties to respect each other's sovereignty. In November of 2007, a copy of these coordinates was placed on a 1 to 25 scale map and handed over to the two countries as well as to the UN and copies of the maps deposited at the UN's cartographic unit. The issue then shifted from one of contested territory to that of occupied territory. An important point to mention is that two of the five EEBC judges were chosen by Ethiopia, another two by Eritrea, and the president of the commission, the late Sir Elihu Lauterpacht, by the UN Secretary General. Each decision of the commission was unanimous. Then the TPLF began presenting weird arguments about why the decision of the EBC is null and void. Initially, it was because Eritrea imposed restrictions on ONMI, the UN peacekeeping force, leading to its withdrawal. The TPLF argued that the Algiers agreement and its outcomes are null and void. They failed to mention that ONMI was deployed to monitor the border until demarcation was completed. Once it was demarcated, there was no further need for ONMI. The weird logic these days is that the boundary decision is null and void because Eritrean troops entered Ethiopian territory. This despite being at the request of the country's sovereign government. By this logic, since Ethiopia invaded Somalia in 2006, Somalia could now claim the Ogaden region. What is fascinating is that this argument is also being propagated by so-called intellectuals, from whom one would expect a higher level of integrity. Finally, what the TPLF cadres fail to mention is that all these years were not only marked by their illegal occupation of Eritrean territories, but also by incessant hostility, terrorist attacks, efforts to rally the region to overthrow the government in Eritrea, 
and all forms of diplomatic pressure and economic sabotage, including unjustified sanctions against Eritrea. Even when in 2018, after TPLF was ousted from power and Ethiopia's incoming Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed Ali declared his acceptance of the border ruling, the TPLF, which was ruling Tigray at that time, erected numerous obstacles to prevent the implementation of the demarcation decision. They even went so far as to organize the celebration of Ethiopian Army Day in occupied Badme in a clear attempt at provocation. To recap, the boundary between Eritrea and Ethiopia is clearly demarcated and the two countries are aware of where their borderline lies. Just as one knows their territory at sea without pillars, demarcation with coordinates is more precise and enduring. Regardless of what the TPLF cadres peddle, Eritrea is today in territory that legally belongs to it. The only outcome of the rants by TPLF cadres will be to sow confusion among the people of Tigray and perpetuate mistrust between the populations of Tigray and Eritrea who share deep historical and cultural ties. If this is not the epitome of irresponsibility, then what is? Horn Perspectives, 17 April 2024